on simple and effective self-defense cane training. This is walking cane self-defense training. Start with the cane in your hand. You're gonna have your palm up, the wrong side comes out of the thumb side. You're gonna twist it, pushing forward, doing this combat cane spinning warm up. We'll start to get your heart rate up. You can do this standing or sitting. This is simply a conditioning exercise to get callus into your hands, to get your hands a little bit stronger, to learn spatial awareness, timing and distance. This is not a self-defense move, but this is important to self-defense training. When you do simple self-defense training with your walking cane, you're gonna bring your hand over and back for this second combat cane spinning warm-up technique. This is like a slap across the face and then follow it with a backhand right into his face for self-defense. You're coming over and back, your stomach's up and in, drop your chin, standing or sitting. Works either way. Once you do this for 30 seconds, put it in the other hand. Start with this simple spin from the side. It looks like this. Your hand is closed, but you're not squeezing. You want it to be able to move and go around. Start to build that callus. Bring it over and back from side to side in this figure eight spin. Stomach up and in, abs tight, feet under your body, or sitting in a chair, or you might be using two canes, one for mobility, one to keep you upright, and then the other one for self-defense. You can practice it this way. The answer to the question, how do you use a cane for self-defense if you need it to keep you up, keep you from falling on the ground, the simple answer is lean on one and use another one to strike with. Strike here, bring it here, bring it up across his face. We're going to practice all those strikes in this simple self-defense cane training video. I want you to learn how to do it simply and effectively. Now, we're going to talk about canes real quick. You might have one of any of these or any other kind. There's no wrong cane to use. The crook allows you to do the spin. Sometimes the crook is a little bit smaller. You can still do the spin with that smaller crook right here. This is made out of rattan and the uh, value in rattan is that it's extremely lightweight and durable. This is a great starter cane. These are very inexpensive. There's a link below. I think it's the second link. These other canes are made out of oak. You can have them made out of hickory. That's even stronger. And these are more serious self-defense canes. This is also a starter cane. The first link below has these canes, but this crook here has this bevel on the end. We're going to talk about smash and grab in this workout today. And when you grab somebody, you're going to reach out and you're going to grab them with that hook and you're going to pull them down, smash them with that elbow for self-defense, or maybe use that knee, bring them down into the knee. But that's the purpose that that also can remove their skin from their face for self-defense. Basic, simple moves that work, nothing else. We're not going to waste our time on it. So this is the one I'm going to use today for training. This is the one I carry in my car. I call this my auto insurance policy, my senior citizens discount. I carry this. Because I'm eligible now, I'm at that age, right? But I carry this when I pump, pump the gas, I'm standing outside, pumping the gas in my car. If I need to, I can immediately bring it into a, 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 an effective self-defense move that you're gonna learn right now. So the first one, now that you're warmed up, you're gonna hold the cane from here. You're gonna pull it up and let it slide down in your hand a little bit. That looks like this, you're standing here. You can lift it and let it slide. Now you're ready to defend yourself or even easier, slide your hand down, lift it up, and now it's like a sword. In this position, you're gonna thrust. That's your first basic stopping move. You wanna reach out and smash him in his face for self-defense, stop his forward advance, don't let him come any closer, stick that through his face, pull it to your shoulder, and slice through. When you slice through, imagine that this hard piece of oak, or yours might be hickory, metal, might be plastic, is smashing against his operating system, his brain. You're gonna knock him out for self-defense. If you can turn off his operating system, either striking here or even into the neck, coming into the neck will also compress those nerves. And if you do it right, blood flushes from his brain. He drops like the sack of poo that he is. He shouldn't have been attacking you, trying to hurt you, trying to steal your, your money, your dignity, your freedom. Slide your hand down, put it between you and him. One foot in front of the other one, thrust from the shoulder striking down. Not from out here, that's wrong. From the shoulder striking down, up to the other shoulder striking down. You have three strikes here. Slide it down, get in a better position. Thrust, shoulder, shoulder. Turn the hand palm up and bring it up, coming through either the side of his face for self-defense, 
maybe into his ribs, maybe into his leg. Maybe he's reaching out. He's got some kind of a bladed weapon, a knife. You're going to bring that up and smash his hand. So from here, you're walking with it. You're minding your own business. Slide your hand down. Put it between you and the threat. Say, hey, we're going to call him the threat. You're too close. Back up. He doesn't. You're going to be the first mover. You're going to hit him before he hits you. Thrusting into his face. Striking one. Striking two. Turn your palm up. Bring it up this way. Palm down. Bring it the other way. Now, you might not do it in that combination, but practice the combination in training so you're ready for self-defense. Slide it down. Pick it up. Thrust. Shoulder down. Two. Bring it up. Bring it up. Number four next is coming straight through in this horizontal strike hello sand dude so from here slide down pick it up thrust hello matthew it's good to see you down bring it up bring it up bring it across bring it back and then down on top put it in your other hand stand back slide the hand down put the cane between you and the threat thrust to make him stop coming forward strike one strike two palm up bring it up bring it to your other hip Bring it through the other side. Turn your palm facing the sky, coming through here. Turn it here, coming through that way. Elite of Battles, good to see you. I love when you guys are here on these live streams, and I like your comments especially, because those comments, when you put them in the comment section, I get to see they live there forever, and I learn from you the way you learn from me, striking down on top. That makes this the virtual dojo. We're all learning from each other. Your hand slides down. This motion can be done by picking it up and letting it slide, or sliding the hand down here, thrust, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, put it in the other hand, start down, slide, get in better position, thrust, slice one, two, three, four, five, six, down on top, seven. Now, those basic seven strikes you can practice over and over and over again. Yeah, can't sand dude, so that's what makes the cane so effective because it's simple. If you keep it simple and you practice those simple strikes when you need them, they will flow out of you. You won't even have to think about it. You'll have strong hands, forearms. You'll be able to do the techniques. Now, let's talk about footing. What is your stance? What are you supposed to do with your feet? With your feet, under your body. And the question that you've asked me recently is what happens if you... Um, don't have good mobility, you have injury, you have limitations, you can't uh, stand without your cane. And we talked about that at the beginning. You're going to use the other cane to lean on and then use one cane for self-defense. And you're not going to walk around because you can't. Just stand in this spot. Defend yourself from here. Keep your thrusting strikes. One, two, bring it up. Three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe you can't stand at all and you're in a chair. Do all these exercises from your seated position. And I also practice a lot in a chair to mimic, to, to imagine that I'm at the bus station or I'm on a, on a train or maybe in the plane or I'm inside sitting somewhere and the, the threat comes up to me and I have to defend myself from a seated position. So I, I suggest to you, whether you need to sit or stand or both, Either way, practice also sitting and doing all the techniques there. Do the warm-up spins while you're sitting. And then practice thrusts and strikes and pushing motions. All right, let's talk about changing the position of the cane from this way to this way so that the crook is facing away from you. Ergonomically speaking, this is better for you. This gives you more support, takes some of the pressure off the wrist if you use your cane for mobility. It also allows you to pick this up really fast and smash him between the legs or smash him up under the chin or hit him in the hand. Yeah, Matthew says he especially appreciates the chair techniques. And sometimes, you know, and I have, I have clients who are in a chair. Sorry, I'm trying to get my knife. They're in a chair sometime and sometimes because the sun shines differently, or who knows why, their body feels a little bit better, and they're on the cane. So they go back and forth, chair, cane, chair, cane. And so they always practice, because you have to, both techniques, both sitting in a chair and practicing for self-defense, because you never know, you might have to be in the wheelchair for the day, and the next day you feel a little bit better, you have a little bit more strength, who knows why, and then you're walking, and you're using one, maybe you're using two, and then you practice with the two canes. But the point is, Practice no matter what. 
Learn how to defend yourself no matter what the limitations are. Some of you have limitations where you can't, you can't do these strikes coming off the shoulder because you don't have the mobility in your shoulder. Maybe you've had an injury, you don't have the strength there anymore. Practice the thrusting motion that you can. Turn the cane around, slide it up, and practice thrusting with this big knuckle smashing right through his nose, his teeth for self-defense. That's effective. From here, practice just turning your wrist in these small motions. Imagine if this were a hatchet and that's his face and you're chopping in with that hard tooth at the end, you're gonna <laughs> dig some skin out of there. You're gonna create some power just in a smaller motion. The point is, wherever your limitation is, that's your reality. Don't, don't use it as an excuse not to do something. And I know it's easy to say, and I'm walking around and I'm showing you, but I've got limitations. We all have different limitations, whether they're physical or mental or both, but learn how to work with what we have because that's our only choice. We have two choices. One, we can roll over and wait to die. Two, we can give up or get up and, and start to fight back in life. So practice that. So with your hand, I wanted to show you the trainer. Last night I was practicing with somebody and he was slicing me all up and I, I would reminded me and this is, this is uh, it's metal, it's aluminum. It hurts when you get hit by it, by the way, but it doesn't cut because uh, you, um, you can't sharpen aluminum. It just melts. So it's just, it's, it's rounded, but it's, it's hard metal. So it, it's better than a live blade so that you don't get cut up for real. And it's better than a rubber blade because those things are just silly and they don't do anything. But either wood or metal, you have something like this. Imagine that the threat that's coming at you has an, uh, a real knife, right? Not a trainer, but a real knife. I wanted you to see you have the advantage of reach. That means you can hit him long before he can hit you. If he's over here, he's got his knife, you've got your cane, you have that reach advantage. You're going to use that first. If you can, in this position, with the crook facing out, you're going to, this is that rattan cane. You, uh, we couldn't get these for a long time. These were um, sold out all through COVID. They stopped bringing them over. They probably bring one, like one container over a year and then they, three companies sell them. But I finally have these. If you're interested, there's a link below. It's a second link. This is that super lightweight rattan. If your arms aren't as strong as they used to be or you have some other limitations for some reason, that's a good start. That's a good alternative. And it's strong and it's not gonna break. But you're here, you're gonna snatch this up between his legs using that reach advantage. His knife is up here, he's aiming up here for you. He's thinking about your face, you're gonna hit him right between the legs and slow him down. From this position, I'm gonna put that in my knife, uh, pocket case where we need it. From this position, put your other hand on it and then thrust. So snatch it up between his legs and thrust. Between the legs and thrust. And I'm keeping it low, I want you to keep it low for a reason. I want you to hit him right here between the belly button and the private parts. So there's that thin muscle. You're going to put that into a spasm. He's not going to be able to chase you or come after you anymore. He's going to fall to the ground from here to here. So you're going to bring it up one, two, one, two. And then practice that on one side, practice it on the other side. Now the obvious answer to the question, what if you need two canes, one to lean on and one to hit him with, well, you're not going to be able to put two hands on it but you're still gonna be able to bring it up and then push. And that's because of this handle here. You have it in this position, which is a very strong position. And when you keep it low from here, if you bring it high, you put a lot of pressure on your shoulder. If your shoulders aren't strong, it's not gonna work very well. But if you keep it low, it's more about turning the shoulders and the hips and pushing straight in. So you can still hit somebody with good force right here. Now from this position, I want you to see another way to use it with the crook facing out with just one arm, and that's to bring it up side, to the side of his head or into his jaw, into the neck, into the arm maybe. Maybe he's rich, but you can even bring that into his leg, or maybe it's a vicious animal, you're out for a walk, you're walking your dog, there's a wild, uh, ferocious dog off of the chain going around ripping people's dogs up. That happens, especially down here a lot, where there are a lot of pit bulls, and I'm not picking on pit bulls, but it happens to be you read the story, a news story, 99 out of 100 of them are going to say pit bull or bully or, or American pit or whatever, but it's some version of that. They're just, they're, I don't know why. We can stay away from that. All right, but from here, because I know there are a lot of pit bull lovers out there and there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is 
If he's coming after your dog, whack him in the face. Or he's coming after you, bring it through the side of the head, and then you can come in to that thrust again. You can bring this to the side of the head and thrust. Now there are two ways to bring it to the side of the head. One is just by turning the hand as you turn the shoulders and hips, and that is if your arm hasn't doesn't have the same mobility, you can't lift that shoulder. If you can, bring your arm out. And the longer you go away from your body, the more leverage you have, the more power is going to hit, and you're going to transfer that power from that hard piece of oak or hickory right into his skull. Knock him out, then you don't have to worry about his knife. So you're going to bring it from here up to here. That's just a fast, explosive strike, and you can practice that again on both hands. And that works if you have one hand on another cane, and then the other one. It's better if you watch it when you practice it. So these one-handed techniques up under the, the, into the groin or into the chin, and then two hands if you can. If not, one hand, bring it up here, two hands, and this thrust. It's a very powerful thrust because you're keeping it in this motion between your body and his body. You're using your arms to push, your shoulders, your hips. As you come forward, you take a little step with your front foot, you'll have even more power. So this is just simple self-defense uh, training with your, yeah, the century bag is pretty good. It's a good way to practice. Alita says, um, these are these are great. If you, if you want a qu quick tip, look on, like let it go if that's still around and uh, like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, you'll see people buy these, especially during the pandemic. Oh, I shouldn't have said that word. During the lockdowns, they had a lot of these. Uh, people bought a lot and then they never use them. So a lot of these are brand new, they're out there. You'll find them at garage sales and you'll find them on places like Let It Go for a lot less than you pay uh, because the shipping costs so much. They're so big. Snatch them up, hit them between the leg. Now the next way I want you to practice using this crook right here is to slide up. So from here, pick it up. Just practice that motion like you're some kind of magician and then stick it in his face, right? So from here, hey, you're getting too close. And then pushing, right like that. Turn, reach, pull. So I want you to reach, pull, and when you reach, pull, think about sticking that right here and that muscle in the back, or here in the back of his neck, or here in the back of his head, or right behind that ear. You might pull his ear off. It might be stuck, right? You can picture it. The ear hole going right through and you ripped it off for self-defense but that's what this is it's not pretty it should be violence to stop violence that's the whole principle this all comes from a book called the the, the principles of self-defense comes from a book called when violence is the answer by tim larkin uh yeah matthew says very effective grab so you're gonna thrust turn two hands on it reach and pull you could also chop Imagine you're that firefighter chopping down a door to get to the baby, to get him out of the burning house, but you're chopping right into his neck, right into his face for self-defense. You can reach and pull. You might be sitting in your chair and you're, you know, hey, you're trying to mind your own business. He comes up, he's picking on you, he's trying to hurt you, thrust right into his face or maybe into the solar plexus. Maybe you turn a little bit. Watch what you do with your hand here. When you turn... Your punch, a boxer's punch, turns all the way like that so you get that full extension of the arm. But imagine your stick is there. What you're doing now is you are setting the stick up to go into that throat and crush his windpipe for self-defense. We say in self-defense you have to remove or destroy. This is in the Tim Larkin's book, When Violence is the Answer. I'll put the link below if it's not already there. When Violence is the Answer... Basic principles of self-defense, number one, situation awareness. Pay attention to what's happening so you don't become a victim. Number two, get in a better posi position. Put the stick between you and the threat. Put your cane between you and the threat. When you do simple self-defense, uh, walking cane self-defense techniques, training, you want to put the cane between you and him. Number three, what can you remove or destroy? His ability to breathe temporarily, busting his nose. <sighs> the blood flows, the, uh, the snot, the spit. The eyes water, he can't see very well, he can't breathe very well, he's choking on his own spit in his blood, or permanently, right through the throat. His ability to breathe goes away, you remove it with the cane, the end. Turning here, maybe you don't even break his windpipe, you just pop him enough that he backs up and he leaves you alone. But you start from this position, you pop it up, 
from here, either straight into the face or that turning motion, and then coming in with the other hand on it, you can also pull this back and then do it again and smash even harder with two hands. Reach out, grab something, doesn't matter what you get, he's gonna feel it for self-defense using that end right there, ripping. You can turn the other side, think about a rifle with a bayonet on the end. There, that's what we'll do with that. I've got, I actually have a bayonet. Uh, for an M4, not an M4, for an M1, Vietnam era. You have, so you imagine, <laughs> this is your rifle with bayonet. The military guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, be explosive, the answer, Evelyn says. Um, Elwin says, so pushing here, right? You started here, thrust, chop, uh, smash, step, smash, my favorite is this motion here. It's my favorite because it's so underrated. People don't imagine using it in this way. You can either have it like this. You can have your hands in the push-up position. It works the same way, whether you're like this or this. This is a little bit stronger. This is awesome because then you can box him on the sides of his ears. But this hard, you have to imagine this hard piece of material, this oak. Uh, you can get hickory. I, I, I highly recommend if you do get a Cane Masters cane from the link below, ask it for it in hickory. And if you're older, go for 7 eighths inch. This is an inch in diameter. Go over, and they have new brass tips. That's something I saw they just added to it. Get a brass tip, and what'll happen is that'll keep the water from getting in there. Hit a lot harder for self-defense. Anyway, so you smash through here, this hard piece of material, smashing his nose, his teeth straight down his face, then his throat, starts sucking on his own uh, blood. He can't breathe for self-defense. I, I, I know I say that over and over again, but I want to make that, that point. I'm not asking you to be violent for just the purpose of being violent. It's only when someone is taking violence to you, trying to remove from you your dignity, your uh, freedom, your life, right? And they're trying to, or, or, the, or your loved ones. Maybe you're with your family. I saw when I went to San Diego recently, I saw a bunch of, hey, Doug, I was thinking about you all week this week. I'm so glad to see you here. I was getting ready to reach out to you. Um, hello, Michael. It's good to see you. Thank you, Michael. Michael says, love your enthusiasm. Smashing here, this hard piece going through the nose. The point is you have every right to defend yourself. It's your life or his life, right? Or maybe your loved ones. I was in San Diego. We were at the San Diego Zoo. I saw two. One was an older woman. One was a younger, by younger, I mean like 40-year-old man with his family. The older lady was with her family, older woman. And they both had a Cane Masters cane. And they're very, once you, once you start messing around with canes, you know what a Cane Masters cane looks like because it has this open crook. Most other canes are gonna come in like this and they're not gonna be made uh, that well today. Oh, good, Michael's going to the San Diego Zoo today. Yeah, beautiful violence, <laughs> Osar says. Yeah, it's only for the purpose of self-defense. It's a very interesting concept. For years and years and years, I've been teaching martial arts, I've been teaching self-defense, and for probably the first 30 years that I taught self-defense, and I've been teaching it since I was a, a military policeman in the Marine Corps, I saw something, a violent situation that involved a woman being hurt horribly, and then just saw how it was, it was so unfair to her, and the bad guy just, you know, got, he didn't get away with it. He's, he, hopefully he was in jail for a long time. But just the, the way that it went down, I thought women need the self-defense, men need self-defense, seniors need self-defense, children need to learn how to defend themselves. And so I got very passionate. I've been teaching it, but I've been learning, been asking other people, what's the best way? What do you know that I don't know? And then going and trying to stay open and let go of things that don't work. And let me tell you, I have let go of more things that don't work than most people will ever learn. Uh, thanks, Doug. Doug, either way, I appreciate you being here. Smashing, Doug was talking about Patreon a little bit. Hi, Deborah. Deborah's in Minnesota. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Michael, and Michael's in California, obviously, if you're going to the San Diego Zoo today, unless you're visiting. And it really does feel sometimes like um, human life isn't as valued anymore. Of the, of the innocent citizen, of the law-abiding citizen, it seems like there's a lot of value given to the crazy, mentally ill who should be incarcerated to protect themselves and, and protect everybody else. Thank you. All Star says he's going to share the video. But smashing here, smashing to the side. Scott's in the Midwest. Scott, it's good to see you from the Midwest. 
pushing here, boxing the ears, thrusting here, smashing down on top. All simple moves. Simple moves are most effective when it comes to self-defense training with your walking stick for self-defense. Now, there are so many more moves that you're going to use. But remember this, techniques will get you hurt, get you killed. Principles will save your life. So if you focus just on learning the perfect technique, as many techniques as you can, but you never practice the simple principles, and these principles real quick again, and this is not all of them, but these are the main ones, situational awareness is always number one. When I was in the uh, military police, when I taught self-defense for years and years, and I worked with law enforcement officers, I used to go on a daily, or a, it was a daily TV show, I didn't go on daily. I went every couple weeks or every month or so for a couple of years when I was in Ohio, and every time I went on to talk about self-defense, I would talk to some law enforcement friends of mine first, especially the detectives in uh, certain types of assault. They would always say, Situ please, 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 tell them situational awareness. And then they would show me videos. We'd watch videos together, and they would show me literally where this woman with her kids walked all around the store and was grocery store. happened to be one of my neighbors too, ha walking around, and there was a, a sicko guy who was just following her and he was this close to her the whole time at any time he could have done what he eventually did in the parking lot and it, it, it didn't end that horribly she was she ended up being safe and she fought him off and but she had her kids with her and she put the car between her and him to protect her kids which is a good mom but the point is it, it, she should have seen him a month or you know uh along the, the first hour that she walked all around the store shopping she didn't see it. she didn't recognize he was there and uh, so situational awareness, and yeah, Doug is, is a law enforcement too. Doug will tell you, situational awareness, if you can pay attention, if you see it before it comes and get out of there, not be, become a victim, that is the most powerful self-defense. Number two, I would say get in a better position. Get in a better position with your cane, put the cane between you and the threat, whether it's like this, or if you get it like this, or if you have it like this, but how, or you can have it like this, right, ready to smash ready to hit him with one hand or with two hands, but get in a better position, put the cave between you and him. Number three, take a deep breath. That helps calm the mind just enough. It's not gonna get rid of the nerves. You wanna keep the nerves. You wanna keep the, the energy. You wanna keep that fear, and you're gonna turn it into indignation. Like, how dare you come after me? How dare you try to take away my freedom, my life, my dignity? How dare you try to hurt my kids? I will defend myself and my family. You put this stick up between you and him, you take that breath. Let it calm you just enough that you can ask the question, what can you remove or destroy? And that's where you answer with his ability to breathe temporarily, permanently, his ability to see, his ability to have his balance. You can smash the ears, break that inner ear, uh, the eardrum, then he can't even stand up. His ability to be awake. Maybe you smash across the forehead, on the top of the head, into that neck, and you turn off his operating system. He falls to the ground. The police come and scoop him up. But you ask that question, what can you remove or destroy? Maybe it's his ability to walk or run, and you go for a knee. Maybe it's his, his ability to stab you with that knife that's coming at you, and you instinctively just smash that wrist and break everything in there, and that knife goes flying. And then you bring it back the other way and turn the operating system off. But you have to ask that question, what can you remove or destroy? Then it's time to get to work. It's time to close with and destroy. Violence of action. If you're too close, he's closed that distance, you let him get too close, then... Don't turn your back and run. You've got to stand and fight and defend yourself. And I've seen recently law enforcement as they talk about, um, yeah, Darren says you don't get to warm up like a swing like in the movies. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to get, it, it doesn't look like the movies. It, when you, if you watch self-defense videos, because they, or not self-defense videos, you watch real attacks and they're all over the internet. I don't do them here, but, but if you do follow um, Tim Larkin's page, channel on YouTube. He does a lot of breakdowns of violent assaults. And you can see it's not like the movie. It never looks like the movies, right? You don't get all of the warning. You don't get all this stuff. Sometimes you do. You can learn how to um, see it coming. But sometimes it's just it, back of your head. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you have a choice. You can either lie on the ground, let them stomp your head the rest of the way in, or you can get up and fight. And obviously, my choice is I'm going <laughs> to That's why I'm carrying the cane for self-defense. That's why you're carrying your cane for self-defense. Anyway, those are the basic principles. Situational awareness, better position, cane between you and him. Take a deep breath. Ask yourself the question, what can you remove or destroy? And then violence of action.
close with and destroy. Close as close as you can while you're striking, smashing, side the head, bringing it in this way, down on top. And what happens if he grabs your cane? What happens if you have the cane in this position and he grabs it? I want to answer that for you really quickly. You're going to take the hand here. Yeah, and, and Doug says attacks. Doug, we talked about this a little bit before he came in. By four-legged attackers, meaning the dogs, or it could be around here, there have been coyotes and bobcats. Coyotes and bobcats, people walking the dogs. And then around here, um, uh, alligators. Uh, an, an older woman, she's in the 80s, she's walking her dog too close to the pond, snatches the 12 foot gator, comes snatch. And I'm not laughing at her because she didn't survive. But snatches up the little dog, she tries to beat him off, snatches her up, pulls her deep into the water, which is what they do. Hello, Studer, it's good to see you. Yeah, four legs, avoid the two legs with a stick. Amen. Um, if you're that two legs with a stick, he, he's not going to want to come in anywhere near that. If someone goes to grab your cane, pin it against your body. On the hip is best because you can turn your hip. If you don't pin it against your hip, he's going to start jerking on it, and it's going to eventually come out of your hand, and he'll have it, and he's going to use that to smash you with it. Yeah, very sad. Um, two lessons there. Don't walk your dog near, especially people who are, because I'm not from Florida originally, from Ohio, there are no alligators. There's nothing in the water in Ohio, in most of the Midwest, there's nothing that can hurt you. Maybe a water moccasin or something if you're in the wrong place, or maybe a snapping turtle take your finger off or a toe, but that's very, very rare. Down here, there's a lot of things in the water that can hurt you, whether it's the ocean or the river or the lake, so you gotta pay attention. So that's number one. Number two, um, and I see it in my neighborhood. A lot of the older gentlemen especially walk with sticks now. And they're walking with, one guy walks with a riot baton. He's an old uh, retired policeman. But, and they walk with sticks and that stick is not for another person. Sometimes it is because the owner of the other dog who is poorly behaved, that rips up their dog, that, that becomes part of it. They become afraid of the altercation that's gonna happen when some other dog snatches their dog up. But it happened to someone that I care about very deeply. He was walking his dog, older dog, and a pit bull come running out of nowhere. Someone was visiting someone. Pit bull snatches up the dog, shakes it to death, and then and he's standing there trying. He's getting bit, trying to get him off of his dog. And you know, and there's no good solution except the society has to be better. We all have to be nice to each other, right? Um, yeah. And Alita says the dogs become aggressive with aggressive owners. And that's, I think that's true most of the time. Um, but if you have your cane, you can do that. All right, so you pin it to your body. And I apologize, I know I keep getting off on that tangent about the dogs. They try to rip it out of your hand. You're going to put your other hand on it, and you're going to turn a circle. So from here, if he's holding it here, that circle is going to twist his arms against each other so that his nerves are touching. And then you're going to push it down and then into his face. So it kind of looks like this. It's here. You make a small circle here. It's the front hand that's making the circle. If he's stronger, turn your hips, your shoulders and your hips. It will give you more power because now all the muscle in your body. When he was pulling on it, about to pull it out of your hand, it's because you had one hand on it. When you anchor it to your hip just by touching your hip, now he's pulling against your whole body weight, which is going to be harder for him to rip it out of your hand. You make that turn as he's coming, as he's pulling. You allow it to go toward him and turn because his energy is coming this way, he's not gonna be expecting that. So you turn it and then you push straight down and then step into him and push him off of you. And that will work a lot of the time if you practice over and over and over. <laughs> does the Florida pit bull belong to Florida man? Always, right, it always does. And I understand that joke, that Florida man joke uh, meme or whatever came around a few years ago. All right, so you guys have been awesome. Um, yeah, Jug says distance from danger is important with the cane. And, um, yeah, Steve, Steve says, and, uh, I've, see, I've see, recently seen the cane that came out of the thing and those things are sharp and wicked. So yeah, if he pulls the shaft of your cane and, and you've got that sword exposed and he's in big trouble. All right. Thank you very much, Alita. Thanks everybody for being here. I will see you on the next one, uh, which should be a little bit later this week. And, um, I think the next one we're doing is Kali. We're doing the Kali sticks again, Screama, Arnis. We're going to get back into that. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.